Coming in at number 10, Ellen DeGeneres. Right when the pandemic happened, a Twitter thread unleashed some of the worst stories involving her and capturing every bad thing that she had ever done. Due to claims of a toxic work environment, an investigation was actually done into the show that exposed a ton of high-level executives who had misused their power and position with the show. In her apology video, Ellen said that she began saying be kind to one another after a young man named Tyler Clementi took his own life because he had been bullied for being gay. A tragedy that should never have happened. But Ellen thought that the best way to honor him was to spread kindness. Unfortunately, taking on the title of TV's Queen of Nice was a much bigger deal than she could have ever imagined. She then encouraged the audience to never give themselves that nickname, because as we saw with Ellen, even the people that we think are nice can be rude sometimes. It's human nature, and honestly, I think that we just need to forget about Ellen and move on by putting our energy into better places. For example, before we jump into our next point, make sure you tap that like button to show some love to the channel. In at number 9, David Dobrik. I think everyone is capable of learning from their mistakes, but for David Dobrik, it's going to be a while before people want to start watching his content again. Something about the way that he reacted to the initial story involving Dirty Dom had left a bad taste in people's mouths. This incident may have even soiled the idea of having a vlog squad type group. With so many personalities and constantly walking that line of reality and entertainment, something was bound to go wrong. David did say in his second apology video that he would be taking a break from social media, but that he also enjoyed creating content. However, he simply waited for the bad press to blow over and then made his return back to the platform. Unfortunately for David, Jeff Wittick also also outed him for being a terrible person when he released his documentary about the excavator accident that nearly led to Jeff losing his life. In at number 8, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf was loved by many as a young actor and even received a Young Artist Award nomination in the year 2000. He also won a Daytime Emmy Award in 2003 for Even Stevens. Although Shia LaBeouf's career would soon take a terrible turn. In 2017 alone, the actor was sued for $5 million by a bartender, he was arrested in Savannah, Georgia for public intoxication, and he was ordered to attend a 10-week rehab program. He was also arrested in Austin, Texas, and witnesses say that the actor was blitzed, out of control, and disobeyed the police. Shia was taken to the Travis County Jail and booked for misdemeanor public intoxication. While he has delivered some terrific performances in his latest projects, many fans can't stand his level of defiance. In at number 7, J.K. Rowling. Gone are the days where J.K. Rowling was simply known as the author of Harry Potter. Nowadays, she seems to be getting herself involved with all kinds of controversial issues, and her constant sassy tweets aren't helping her case. When someone complained about her being too wealthy, she said that she would type a longer response, but that the diamond keypad hurts her fingers. Then after making a stern position about the transgender movement, JK Rowling became even more of a lightning rod for controversy. The reason we truly need to forget about JK Rowling is because she is seemingly feeding into her own controversies. For example, after she got backlash for her discriminatory trans comments, she wrote a book where the villain is a man who dresses as a woman. So yeah, it didn't exactly calm things down when that happened. She even published it under her ghost author named Robert Galbraith. Somehow the irony is lost in her that she identifies as a man for books, but has a problem with people who say that they don't feel comfortable in their own body. In at number 6, James Charles. James Charles released an apology video in response to the allegations that he had exchanged inappropriate messages with underage people. Typically in a James Charles apology video, he would shift the blame from himself onto someone else, but James full on admitted to his mistakes. He admitted to having engaged in a flirtatious conversation with two 16 year olds, once from 2021 and again just recently which was exposed all over TikTok. Although he is still standing by the defense that he believed both people were 18 years old at the time. However, if we are going to be transparent with James Charles' intentions, then I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this apology came after he was replaced on the YouTube TV show that he co-created called Instant Influencer. With repeated allegations of inappropriate behavior, it's safe to say that most people just want to see James Charles quit YouTube forever. In at number 5, Chrissy Teigen. Chrissy Teigen was all over the news because of a scandal regarding past messages that she had sent. Along with that, she also left Twitter blaming its toxic cycle for putting her into a bad mood, but then out of nowhere she was back and tweeting up a storm. That is until those tweets and private messages to Courtney Stodden began to emerge. Then she went quiet again and returned only to give a forced apology. Chrissy used to be beloved on Twitter for going after controversial celebrity figures, but now the script has flipped on her entirely. After this weak apology to save her sponsorship deals, Chrissy's image had slowly shifted from savior to get her out of here. She even had the audacity to say that she had apologized to Courtney Stodden, but in reality, she had blocked Courtney months ago. In at number 4, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp has been tangled up in a legal battle with Amber Heard for quite some time now. The initial article from the Sun newspaper that referred to Depp as a wife beat severely damaged the actor's reputation, and as a result, we saw him being unceremoniously pulled from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. In light of the article, author J.K. Rowling defended Depp in his inclusion with her series called Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald. However, following the loss of his high profile libel case against UK newspaper The Sun, Depp was forced out of Fantastic Beasts by Warner Bros. So, despite this legal battle going on for years, it was 2020 that Johnny Depp truly began to lose all of his opportunities. 
opportunities. Coming in at number three, Chris D'Elia. D'Elia was canceled and had been accused of and attempting to solicit inappropriate photos from underage girls. A woman named Simone tweeted out a screenshot of her alleged interactions with Chris, which began a thread of other women sharing their interactions with him as well. The stories were all pretty horrific, considering that they were allegedly all underage at the time that Chris had sent these messages to them. However, in response to having his name dragged through the mud online, Chris told TMZ, I know I have said and done things that might have offended people during my career, but I have never knowingly pursued any underage women at any point. All of my relationships have been both legal and consensual, and I have never met or exchanged any inappropriate photos with the people who have tweeted about me. In at number two, Brian Adams. It's safe to say that Brian Adams will always remember the summer of COVID-19. The six-year-old Canadian singer stirred a ton of controversy after having to cancel a three-night stint of shows in London. In the tweet, he said, Tonight was supposed to be the beginning of a tendency of gigs at the Royal Albert Hall, but thanks to some bat-eating, wet market animal selling, virus-making greedy bastards, the whole world is now on hold. Now, regardless of where the coronavirus came from, it's tweets like this that were causing a violent energy towards Asian Americans. Oddly enough, Adams got more annoying when he tried to spin this tweet into an advocacy of a vegan diet. This really angered a lot of people, and rightfully so. One user commented, Dear Brian Adams, you might have just lost 99% of the people who would have bought tickets for your shows, but fear not, you'll still have your racist friends sticking by you and calling you a legend, like Katie Hopkins. All is not lost except your reputation and career. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Kathy Griffin. In 2017, the comedian became a magnet for controversy after after posting photos of herself holding a ketchup covered head that looked exactly like Donald Trump. I suppose the networks were frightened of this PR disaster and so Leno, Conan, Ellen, The View, Live with Regis and Kelly, The Today Show, and Letterman all banned Kathy Griffin from coming on live TV. CNN would go on to announce that they also relieved Griffin of her New Year's Eve coverage duties as well, a job that she had with the network for close to a decade. President Donald Trump even responded to the graphic imagery when he tweeted, Kathy Griffin should be ashamed of herself. My children, especially my 11-year-old son, Baron, are having a hard time with this. Sick. Griffin did end up apologizing and said, I sincerely apologize. I'm a comic. I crossed the line. I moved the line. Then I crossed it. I went way too far. The image is too disturbing. I understand how it offends people. It wasn't funny. I get it. I beg for your forgiveness. That's been today's list though, and if I missed anyone, make sure you drop us a comment down below. And while you do that, I'm going to check out some of your comments from the video titled, Kim Kardashian Slam for Claiming No One Wants to Work. Kinetics3050 says, I find it amusing how people born into money and infamy like to tell us how to work, and half of their business ventures suck. <laughs> Hey, you said it, you said it. Mrs. Tina Reipster says, I'm a retail manager and it's true, no one wants to work, at least in retail. No offense, but retail can be a very boring job at times. But like the saying goes, if you got time to lean, you got time to clean. Maybe try saying that to them. Hey, it's Cammy says, well, if I was born into a family with money and connections, I would probably be filthy rich too. Yeah, there's also a ton of people who were born into wealthy families and then find a way to completely squander all of their inheritance. Tracy Lee says, Wow, I work between 30 to 50 hours a week at times, and I know others work just as hard as well. She is so wrong. Well, she's wrong for many reasons. Natalie says, None of the Kardashians, besides their dad, should ever make a comment like that. Yeah, very good point. That's all the time that we have for today, though, folks, so stay classy, and I'll see you on the next one.